Perhaps this could be one of the strangest bets ever placed by a politician, or perhaps the smartest move ever performed by a politician. Donald Trump trying to court Bernie Sanders voters for 2020. I find this story remarkable and hilarious because you've got Joe Biden barely trying to get the vote of the Bernie Sanders supporters, the Democratic establishment basically wagging their fingers in the face of these Bernie people, insulting them and telling them no way. And Donald Trump actually trying to coax votes from Sanders populists while telling the left it's okay to hate Biden. You know, a lot of Bernie Sanders supporters are probably going to vote for Trump for one reason. I'm not saying almost or even a lot. Uh, or no, I am saying a lot, right? But I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to make it seem like there's going to be millions of them. Could be a couple hundred, could be a few thousand. They're going to vote for Trump because they want to watch the world burn. And they think Donald Trump is the chaos candidate. The same thing happened in 2016. You're then going to find a group of Sanders supporters who agree with Trump being anti-establishment. Not so much about watching the world burn, but to try and knock down the DNC so that maybe they get a chance next time. Then you'll find some people who actually agree with his policies on trade and say, well, Bernie was preferred, but they'll take what they can get. Joe Biden's not the right answer. He's more, he's an international like trade guy. He's, he's the Obama administration. Well, Donald Trump has found an opportunity in the Bernie Sanders left who are angry and dejected. And while people on Twitter smear and berate the Bernie supporters, I will tell you this. You will not. You, you, uh, many people may be surprised to see, but I doubt. It would be, well, it's not surprising to me. You will see Trump supporters fanning over Bernie supporters saying, what can we do to convince you? Meanwhile, the Democrats are saying, you better vote for Joe or else you're irresponsible and F you. You're voting for Trump, you bigot. Calling them all the worst names in the book. Donald Trump supporters are going to put on their MAGA caps, grab a beer and say, hey, buddy, we may disagree, but I got a beer for you. Let's talk about it. Because the Trump supporters are smart enough to know that diplomacy will get them more votes. For some reason, the Biden people, I guess it's the TDS, right? The Trump derangement syndrome. Their emotions are running so hot, they've lost their mind. So all they can do is screech. It's going to cost you, a, it's going to cost you your, your 2020, man. The Examiner reports, even as the Democrats seek to unite behind former Vice President Joe Biden, the Trump campaign is going to work targeting Bernie Sanders populist supporters while discouraging progressives out of the GOP's reach from voting for the presumptive Democratic nominee. There is, there, is a, a, there is a significant percentage of Sanders supporters, about 20%, who back him not for his policies, but for his anti-establishment and anti-status quo persona, said Republican pollster Frank Luntz. That's the Trump target in 2020. To win them, Trump and his supporters are emphasizing points of agreement on issues like trade while portraying Biden as a Washington insider who cheated Sanders out of the nomination, just like Hillary Clinton four years ago. Quote, President Trump is still disrupting Washington, D.C., while Biden represents the old, tired way and continuing to coddle the communist regime in China, said Trump campaign manager Brad Parscale in a statement after Sanders suspended his campaign. Democrat elites shoved Bernie Sanders to the side for a second time, leaving many of his supporters looking for a new home. And I will tell you what, the audio was released. Donald Trump was scared of Bernie Sanders. He said it, his words. He's the one person he really didn't want to go up against. Bernie Sanders talked big on trade, just like Trump did. And Trump knew that overlap would be bad for him. So you know what? When Trump says they sidelined the guy, I think Trump is being honest. Not that it's a manipulation to try and win over Bernie supporters. I mean, it is a little bit for sure. It'd be stupid not to assume that. But I think Trump's legitimately saying, hey, man, look, we agree on this issue. They don't. They're nuts. All right. They, they're the ones who tried booting you out. They do the same thing to me. And I think a lot of the Bernie supporters might actually listen, especially I'll tell you what, man, there are some Bernie supporters who have been on Twitter saying, I refuse to support Biden. Hey, man, I respect that. I don't think anybody should be pressured into voting for anybody. You vote for someone you believe in. And Joe Biden, if you don't believe him, don't vote for him. Trump, you don't believe in him, you don't vote for him. But what is the response from these resistance establishment crony Democrat types? Smearing, belittling, insulting. Yeah, OK, man, I'll tell you what. I will have a sit down conversation with a progressive thought leader all day and night about how the media lied about Bernie and about the Democratic establishment sidelines in. Oh, we'll debate policy and I'll disagree with you. But I'll tell you what, these people who would smear and crap all over the Bernie supporters are the same people who do the same thing to me, the same thing to any moderate, the same thing to Trump. I've seen, I've seen people, these progressive personalities, actually, not all of them, but there's a few of them who are really good people and have given a fair shake to some more moderates and some conservatives have an honest conversation about it. There are some people on the left 
who are totally legit. You know what? I'll give a shout out to the Hills Rising, Crystal Ball and Sagar Anjedi. They do a great show and it's like populist left, populist right. And they're honest about it. And you can disagree on policy, but they're honest about it. And that's great. That's all I ask for. So I wouldn't be surprised if some of these more honest populist leftists might say, hey, man, I'll tell you what. If you give me a choice between an elitist like Joe Biden, who can't even think straight, and a populist like Trump, who's kind of a nasty dude, well, populism is much preferable to elitism. You're going to see tons of people saying, while Trump is bad in a million different ways, there is something fundamentally broken about the Democratic establishment and Joe Biden. I'm not saying everybody feels that way, but I'm willing to bet you find a lot of people who do. Trump put it more bluntly himself, quote, Bernie Sanders is out. Thank you to Elizabeth Warren. If not for her, Bernie would have won almost every state on Super Tuesday. The president tweeted, this ended just like the Democrats and the DNC wanted. Same as the crooked Hillary fiasco. The Bernie people should come to the Republican Party. Trade. Trump knows it. He knows they're big on labor and trade. And it's true. The Democrats never wanted Bernie. But you know what, Bernie supporters? Bernie never wanted Bernie. All right, maybe he did. But I'll tell you what. How fast, how, 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 how quickly did he bend the knee to the establishment in 2016 and 2020? You want to call that a revolution? If Bernie Sanders came out in 2016 or this year, maybe, maybe in 2016 he bent the knee because he was like, I'll try again in the next, you know, in the next cycle. Fine. Then Bernie could have come out right now and said to all of his supporters, vote third party. You know why? They're not going to vote for the Democrats. Some of them might. But you need a mass movement to attract, to break the two-party system. Now, I don't, I don't ultimately care too much about the two-party system. I don't like the control of two major establishment private organizations. I, you know, I get it. It is the way it is. And you can't break in if you're an outsider. Although when the Republicans, you know, with, with them, Donald Trump was able to do it. The Democrats have kept out Bernie Sanders. Bernie could have converted his movement into a major push for an alternative. And yes, it would have meant Trump would likely win because it split the vote. It would disrupt the Democratic Party and the establishment. He didn't do that. He could have done that. Perhaps the best thing for Bernie supporters then is to find a third party candidate who speaks to their values. And of course, the Green Party much more likely does. If you can see, if imagine what would happen if in 2020, or in November, I should say, I, I mean election when I say 2020, imagine what would happen if the results came in and it was, you know, uh, 60 million for Trump, 30 million Green Party, 30 million Democrat. What would that do to this country? You would see a major shift in the possibilities. All of a sudden, progressives now seeing a chance to win in 2024 might actually go to a third party. That's how you need, that's how you awaken a third party. But, but listen, none of that matters. Because Bernie Sanders waited until y'all turned around to pull out the blade and put it in your back. And, and I know a lot of people are like, Bernie didn't betray us. We always knew he was going to do this. Bernie Sanders coming out and saying it was for a revolution. This is the revolution. We're going to change. We're going to fight for these things. And then to immediately bend his knee to the Democratic establishment, to someone like Joe Biden. Come on, man. You were played. It's time to admit it. They're not going to give you what you want. Even Bernie won't give you what you want. As best I can tell, Bernie's a fail safe for the DNC to attract progressives. So they give all their money to the establishment, to the DNC, to prop up Bernie, a man who will never fight for you. He betrayed his own supporters so many times. I'm not telling any of these people to vote for Trump because I'm not I'm, I'm not interested in, you know, we'll see how things play out. People have asked me who I'm going to vote for. I'll tell you this, to be honest, I'm closer to, you know, cons- uh, well, I'm considering Trump. I'm closer to voting for him than I've ever been. I've said in the past, I'd never do it. Well, th- times have changed and these people have gone nuts. I'm not there though. I'm still much more to a point where I'm like, you know, man, I can't stand any of these people. The risk to me, what I'm seeing now is Joe Biden, a dude who can't talk. And Joe Rogan, you heard him. I, I mentioned this several times, but it's a very important point. Not just that he's making it. Anybody could make it. Man, m- most of us would vote for literally anyone over Joe Biden. That dude's scary. Donald Trump has, has attitude problems. Donald Trump has behavioral issues. Sure, fine. And you can argue the guy talks not well, but the dude's doing stuff that works. The economy was going great. Trump has, has ideas. And though he may be impulsive, at least he's there. You see Trump, you say, hey, Trump, what's two plus two? He's going to go four. Well, why are you asking? You go to Biden and you say, what's two plus two? And he's going to go, oh, well, you know, uh, well, well, you, well, the numbers aren't the issue. I, well, I, we got a shortage. You get it. So will the Bernie Sanders supporters go to Donald Trump? I don't know. Check this out, though. Quote, 
About 20 percent of the Sanders uh, Sanders uh, Sanders vote supported Trump over Clinton in 2016 or stayed home. And they are still somewhat gettable today, said Luntz. But it will be harder this time because there are less of them. There just aren't many crossover voters anymore. Demographically, they are most likely to be male over the age of 50 white non-college grads and a significant percent belonged belonged to a union at one time. They don't agree with Trump on all the issues, but they do agree with him on welfare and immigration. And they think he's a victim of a hostile media. Democrats believe they could avoid a repeat this time around because Trump's incumbency and how early Sanders backed Biden. Sanders was still running against Clinton at this time in 2016, just as she was still running against Barack Obama at this point in 08. And some Republicans are also skeptical. We haven't seen the same effect in our 2020 battleground polling, warned GOP pollster Chris Wilson. Only a handful, one to three percent of Bernie voters vote Trump in a Trump Biden ballot. It looks like a big chunk of Sanders 2016 vote was an anti Hillary protest vote. And that explains the 2016 Bernie Trump vote, Wilson added. Sanders' early endorsement of Biden makes all the difference in the world, said Democratic strategist Brad Bannon. In 2016, the war between Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton lasted until July and gave the Vermont senator's supporters only four months to grieve, get over their hero's defeat, and do a 180 to vote for the Democratic nominee in November. Now Sanders voters have a full seven months to lick their wounds and get back in the fight. The other reason for a lower Sanders supporter defection rate this year, opposed to four years ago, will be four years of Donald Trump. For progressive activists, the reality of the Trump presidency in 2020 is a more compelling reason to vote for the Democratic standard bearer than the threat of a Trump presidency was in 2016. They say another Bannon has a different message. Either don't vote or vote Trump, wrote former White House chief strategist Steve Bannon on Real Time with Bill Maher. The Bernie people helped make Trump president, and they're going to help make Trump president again because he's been screwed by the Democratic Party. I think we're going to see a lot of Bernie voters protest, and that's going to cost the Democrats. But, but here's the thing, man. Donald Trump was benefited by these Bernie votes. Without them, he may be in trouble because Trump won by narrow margins. But even the New York Times reported last fall that Trump's base today is bigger than ever. I think Trump's won over a ton of Democrats already, and he might lose the Bernie or bust people, but his coalition is bigger. We'll see how it plays out in November. I'll see you all tomorrow in the next segment at 10 a.m. Thanks for hanging out.